Hey everyone, my name is Brad Westfall and we're going to be talking about state for a little mini series and this is the first video in that series and so if you're new to React or maybe you've done React for a little while, I think you're going to find this series insightful because we're going to be talking about some of the things that some people, if you're like me, skipped over when we were first learning state. And so we do these workshops all the time at reacttraining.com and I'm teaching people state and declarative programming and there's a lot of times when people who are attending our workshops have been doing React for a while and they actually say, hey, I'm really glad I I was really paying attention during the first part of this workshop. I was planning on learning a lot of things in the last part of the workshop where you get into the advanced stuff, but the first part I wasn't planning on learning very much because it was about state and I already knew, I thought I knew everything about state and I actually learned a lot. So we get those compliments all the time. So I'm hoping that I can give you some of this knowledge that we teach in our workshops and then I don't know, maybe we'll see you in one of our workshops to learn even more things, okay? So anyways, we've got this, this React component over here and it produces this UI over here. But before we talk about this component, let's actually just forget about React and kind of pretend like React doesn't even exist. So I'm going to make this function make div and we're going to pass in some argument and then we're going to have this return to us a string because we don't have React. Remember in this world, React doesn't exist. So everything is going to be based on kind of like these old school template looking things. And so we're going to do something kind of like that. Now, if I wanted to use this and, and to make some DOM, I guess I would have to call make div and, and pass in whatever argument I want. And that's going to produce a string that looks something like that. Now I'm going to have to figure out how to make this a DOM node and how to update the DOM tree. Okay, that's a lot of stuff that I have to figure out on my own. And that's a lot of how things that I have to do on my own. So that's imperative. Anytime you're doing something that is how you're doing something that is imperative. Now that, that didn't make a lot of sense to me when I was first learning, but Stick with me on this video and I think it'll make more sense as we go along. But when you think imperative programming, just think of, of how, and also think in terms of we're doing more detailed work. We're, we're figuring out exactly uh, you know, the details of how this is going to work. Okay, so now let's say that uh, we've got this code here and there's some state somewhere that changes and that's gonna maybe re require a, an update in the UI. And so let's say we need to change our state and then we have to call this function again because that's how we're gonna get a new chunk of UI based on that state. So make div and let's say the state became two, this would naturally make something like that. And then you gotta figure out how to update your DOM so that now that div has a two in it instead of a one. Okay, so the imperative nature of this is not like how React works, but there is a certain aspect of this which is almost exactly like how React works. And that is the fact that you have a function that makes an instruction for UI and if your state changes, you got to call your function again. If we wanted to change our state another time, we'd call the function again and we would get a new new piece of UI from that. So your UI is dependent on your state. If your state changes, here's what your UI is. If, if my state is this now, here's what my UI is based on this new state. That is very, very React-like. So let's go over here and take a look at a React component, this counter component. Now, if I was doing this kind of like how I did with the make div, we would have our state on the outside and we would be explicitly calling the counter components with count like this. And then I guess this would be very much like the make div example. But instead with React, we're actually gonna keep track of our state on the inside of the components. This is gonna be referred to as local state. And then the idea is I'm gonna have some state right here, which, which you know gets shown right here in our UI. And so based on the count of zero, Here's my UI. If the, the count were to change to be something different, here's what my UI looks like when count is two. If count is four, then it looks like this. Maybe I'll even have a rule in here that says, if count is bigger than three, then that's the only time that I wanna do this message right here for, for that thing, okay? So we do something kinda like that. And so now you can see that since count is four, here's what my UI looks like when count is four. We see the counter up there. But if I change this back to be zero, Here's what my UI looks like. Here's my instruction for what my UI looks like when count is zero. So based on this state, here's what my UI looks like. Based on this new state, here's what my UI looks like. You're constantly producing the set of instructions into React and then they're making that a reality. And so you're doing declarative work. You're basically saying what you want. Based on this state, here's what I want and then React makes that a reality, and so they're doing the imperative code behind the scenes because they still have to figure out how to turn this into a DOM element and actually update the DOM, but you get to write what you want. So 
Now I've got to figure out how to make this thing a little bit more interactive because I don't, I don't really want to have to hand program the, the new number and hit refresh. I want to just make it a reality. So how do I make it so that that thing right there is going to call that function so that we can basically produce a new set of instructions? Well, that's what use state is going to do for us. And so if I go right here, I can do use state. A lot of you might understand how this works already, but use state returns an array, and whatever we pass in right there, they give you an array with that thing as the first part of the array. So we're gonna call that count, and then we're gonna call this function they give us set count. Okay, so if we do that, this will work, and we've got this count variable here. This code right here is very similar to just doing const count equals zero. I mean, that's basically what, what we have here, const count equals zero. They don't like that with the squiggly red lines because we already have a count variable, but here's my state, here's my output, okay? So here's my my dynamic state and here's my, my output. Now I gotta call this function if I wanna change the state. I can't mutate that variable directly. I'm gonna call this function and calling this function right here, here's the key, it's gonna cause a re-render. And then when we get a re-render, by the way, re-render in React means that anytime this function gets called, okay? So the very first time that the function was called and we produced the very first uh, output, we call that the initial render or the first render. And then if your state changes, you get a re-render. And so calling set count or any of these functions that you get back from use state is gonna cause us to get a re-render. And then when counter gets called again, all this code has to run again, right? Including calling use state. But React is clever and they know that this is the second call to use state or the third call or the fourth call. The point is they know that it's not the first call to use state because in the first call, this variable right here establishes your initial state, but then after that, calling use state will just give you back whatever the new state is that's been changing. And so if I make a function right here, let's just say add, and then we say set count to be basically whatever the count is plus one. Now I can go down here and I can program it on click for this button and we could do, uh, we could do add like that. And so when the button gets clicked, that's naturally gonna call this, which is gonna call set count to be one bigger than what it is. That's gonna cause a re-render. And then eventually use state's gonna get called, which is gonna return the one right there. So the way that count becomes a one is by the re-render having use state called, which returns the one right there, which means technically if I console log count right here, it's still gonna be zero, okay? So if I go over here, you can see that the, the button worked, the UI worked but we still get a zero right here. So setting the count to be one bigger than what it is doesn't change count right now. It queues up a re-render. That's the big thing. Okay, so let's put the console log here and I just wanna show you or prove to you that every single time we click on the button, we are in fact getting a re-render. This code is being called again, this function, and that's gonna be proven by the fact that we're gonna get all this code happening again, including that console log. So the very first time we refresh the page, we get that zero from that console log, and every time I click here, we get a new number. Okay, so that's that's the proof right there that we're getting those re-renders. Now, when I'm doing this code, what exactly am I giving React? Okay, based on this state, here's what my UI looks like. Based on this new state, here's what my new UI looks like. So that's how React works. But what am I giving React? I mean, it looks like we're giving them JSX, but the browser doesn't understand JSX. So this right here, this is not uh, HTML inside of JavaScript. It's not a templating language, which is usually, templating languages are usually string-based. You, know, you have a string, you fill it up with you know variables, and you end up with a string at the end of a, of a templating language. This uh, JSX is a function call, okay? This right here is, is calling a function. And then this right here is also calling a function. So it's almost like each node in the JSX is a function call. And basically what this amounts to is if I do a return right here, this is almost looking something kind of like this. This right here turns into react.createElement. Now technically React 17 is coming out soon or, or just came out. And so uh, this function is gonna change just a little bit, but it's still gonna be a function call. So let's just kind of go with this. So this is gonna make a, a an instruction to React to make a div. You're not actually making a div node right here. You're not actually making like a DOM thing in memory right now. You're just calling a function. And then these two things are the are the children of that div. And so this is another instruction and this is another instruction. Those go here and here. So I guess you could say this right here would be another React to create element for the next thing, which is that second div. And then this one would be another React to create element for the button. Now I'm not going to hit save and, and make this code look all pretty, but that's basically what's going on is that these nested 
JSX things are nested function calls. And when you call those functions, they return objects. Okay, those objects describe your UI. So based on this state, let me describe my UI to you. Based on this new state and the getting a re-render, let me return a new description of my UI. That's what you're building is a description of the UI. So let's kind of see what that looks like. So we're gonna, we're gonna uh, do a variable for, let's get the output of that function. And let's return that so we can still have React work, okay, output. And let's console log that. So console log output, and let's see this thing work. So there it is. This is the, the object that gets produced from React.createElement. So if I open this thing up, you can see, you can always recognize it from this dollar sign, dollar sign type of thing, and it's saying that's making a div. That's that outer div right there. What about the next two things, the inner div and the button? Well, if I click on props right here, you can see that it's an array of two things. It's an array of two of those nested instructions div and button and if i open up this one you can see this is the the button and eventually if we dig down far enough we can see that this is the instruction right here literally that says react we want you to make a button who has uh, the contents of count equaling zero and i know this is like uh this is uppercase up here uh capital letters and this one isn't that's because of css but anyway uh this is making the instruction for how to make basically nested dom okay you nested jsx leads to nested calls to functions, which leads to nested DOM. So how is this declarative? Well, because you're basically saying, based on the state, here's what I want. And then React does the imperative code to take those instructions and make it a reality in the DOM. So they're doing the imperative code. You're doing the declarative code. You're saying what you want. They're making sure they know how it's going to actually happen. Okay, so just to take this one step further, I just wanna show you one thing, and that is, you might be thinking that if I have a big chunk of, of JSX here that is going to be returned for my function every time, like what if I had a really big chunk of JSX, a lot bigger than this one, and every time I change state, I'm gonna get a re-render and produce that same giant chunk of JSX, that big nested object to React. Does that mean they have to build that whole thing in the DOM every single time? Not really. So what React does is they take these, um, let's go back over here to the console and, and click a few times. They take these, these objects and they do a diffing algorithm on them called reconciliation. And then they, they keep track of all of this in something that they call the virtual DOM, which is basically their fancy way of saying that they're tracking what they think the DOM should look like, but in memory, so they can do this diffing algorithm in memory, which is a lot faster than working with the real DOM. And they're basically figuring out what the UI is gonna look like ahead of time whenever whenever there's a change and whenever you provide a new set of instructions, they're figuring out the new virtual DOM and then they're using that and the diffing algorithm to actually see what needs to update in the real DOM. And so we can actually see that play out by going over here to the elements section. And I can see that here's my, my outer div with the, the div with counter and there's the button. Watch this. When I click and I'm getting whole new sets of instructions, when I click here, the only thing that's updating is the button. We can see that because Chrome DevTools will illuminate purple the things that change. So this is like the, the proof that even though I might be providing a big, huge set of instructions every single time there's a state change, that's not gonna lead to a slow user interface experience where React has to rebuild that entire DOM again. They're only updating the DOM that matters. And so that's just like an extra little bonus material because that's not directly related to what we were talking about before, but I guess kind of indirectly related. The point is you have state, your state changes, you get a re-render, and then you get to declaratively describe what you want your UI to be based on that state change.